Hi, it's new project time again, and today I'm looking for a microcontroller. I'm pretty microcontroller agnostic. I don't care which one I use as long as it meets uh, several requirements that I have. Now, the requirements that I have are A, it's got to be low power because I'm targeting a really low power single battery design. So we're talking like a year battery life kind of stuff, right? We're talking like really low power. Uh, two, it's got to have an LCD controller built in uh, up to, I think, uh, 73 at current count, 73 segments. So it's got to support, you know, a, a reasonably uh, complex um, LCD built in. I could use an external uh, LCD controller, of course, but that's an extra bomb item, extra cost, everything else. Nicer if it's built into the microcontroller. But if I can't get a suitable microcontroller with the number of uh, LCD driver segments building, columns and rows, haven't figured out my columns and rows yet. I've done an LCD design video, which I'll uh, link in if you haven't seen it, how to design your own custom LCD. And I'll be doing that again for this uh, project as well. So you can probably see that in the future. So it's got a drive up to you know over 70 uh, LCD segments and the third major requirement is actually uh, multiple 32-bit timers internal timers now this doesn't necessarily mean I have to go to a 32-bit microcontroller you know everyone's going oh they just use arm blah, 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 blah. okay right and you don't you can possibly even there might I don't know offhand if there's an 8-bit micro with a 32-bit timer built in. Usually you don't get a 32-bit timer in a microcontroller unless they're like it's a dedicated 32-bit uh, micro uh, perhaps. But uh, usually you'll get like maybe a 16-bit timer and uh, often you can actually cascade the two of those uh, together to give you a 32-bit uh, timer. So, you know, multiple 16-bit uh, timers is okay, as long as they are uh, cascadable. Uh, and then you've got uh, pre-scalers and stuff like that. We might go into that other um, things to do with the timer. So I want two high-resolution timers, uh, hardware timers, uh, to do some dedicated counting. And it, I, it won't fit the count thing that I'm counting won't uh, fit in 16 bits. So I really need that 32-bit uh, uh, count. So, uh, you know, there's ways to get around. Like if you've only got a 16-bit counter, there's ways to get around a bit. Nah, no. I just want like a 32-bit timer. So I'm, I can't remember the last time I needed a 32-bit timer in a microcontroller. It may be never. Um, Oh, I wouldn't say that, but yeah, I, I can't remember the last time. I think I cascaded to 16-bit uh, timers. I don't think I've ever used an actual dedicated hardware 32-bit timer. Now, when I first think of a microcontroller that uh, has LCD and ultra uh, low power, I'm thinking of uh, the TI MSP 430, of course, absolute classic. Um, I'm also thinking of uh, the PIC uh, 24F. Uh, series, uh, for example, which I've uh, used before in uh, many projects and stuff, maybe even the PIC32 series, but I think I'd, I'd be surprised if I couldn't find something in like a PIC16 uh, uh, series, because I'm pretty sure the PIC16 series from memory has uh, cascadable 16-bit uh, timers in it, but I don't know if any 8-bit uh, uh, micro, actually, you know, the 8-bit PICs or, or whatever, actually have a um, multiple cascadable 16-bit timers, can't, off, offhand, <laughs> Rusty old memory, I don't actually remember. So we're going to do some parametric searching today to see if we can find it. Now, I'm open to pretty much any brand uh, micro, but I don't want overkill. It's not going to be running fast. It's probably only going to be running at a megahertz or something like that, right? So not fast um, at all, but I want it to be low power. So any low power sleep modes, any sort of, you know, um, any funky like LCD, uh, like low power LCD stuff and other things uh, built in, that'd be really nice. So I'm uh, going to go to... Uh, DigiKey here. I'm in the micro uh, controller section, and basically one of the uh, things, because one of the main requirements is that 32-bit timer. Um, I'm just looking through the parametric search here, and it might show none of them even show timer. Right? It's not a thing that they have in the parametric search, and certainly not, um, you know, telling you whether or not it's like 32-bit capable. So really. Um, you know, yeah, like you can search for LCD, like you can get ones for that have LCD and stuff like that, and, and you can't separate these. So it's yeah, it's pretty much useless. Um, in fact, totally useless. Let's go to Mouser um, and see if they're any better. Um, they separate them into uh, 16 bits, so we can go into 16-bit micros here. 
for example, because uh, you stand more of a chance to get your uh, timer. Now let's see what peripherals, you know, ADC and stuff like that, right? Um, and I get a number of IO pins. I don't need many IO pins apart from all the pins required, of course, for the uh, LCD. Of course, I don't need 70 plus pins for the LCD because the LCD would be multiplexed. It'll have uh, commons and um, lines as well. So I could easily get away with like a 44 pin quad flat pack or something like that. Um, and memory and memory and uh, RAM really doesn't matter. Um, this is not a complicated uh, project application which I've got in mind here. So yeah, <laughs> you know, a few K of memory is probably enough really. But yeah, we got absolutely nothing here in uh, the parametric search for that. I could go try, you know, element 14 and all the rest of it, but nah, nah. It, this is the kind of thing when you're searching for specific individual peripherals like this, and they're important in your parametric searches, you really do want to go straight to the manufacturer's website. But hey, this is 2023. Let's ask chat GPT. Let's see if ChatGPT version 4 knows. Of course, it doesn't have like live data, like recent, but you know, a couple of year old data is fine. List all the microcontrollers that have internal 32-bit timers. <laughs> Let's give it a go. There are many microcontrollers available on the market with internal 32-bit timers. While it's difficult to list every single one, here are some of the more popular controllers that have internal 32-bit timers. The STM32, ARM Cortex, yeah, like it's, that's, oh, ARM Cortex is uh, overkill. Uh, well, it may not be. Um, that PIC32 series, yeah, the MIPS uh, core by microchip, yep, uh, particular examples. So uh, ChatGPT knows uh, the Tiva C series by TI, um, the NXP LPC series, the Atmel SAM series, which is another Cortex, uh, Expressive, um, Tensilia, okay, <laughs> Renesis, um, ARM Cortex cores, Silicon Labs EFM32, is that, that's the uh, Gecko, or is the Gecko the smaller? series I can never remember. Um, Infinium, Cypress, keep in mind that this is not exhaustive and there are many other microcontrollers that feature 30 additionally new microcontrollers. Yeah. I'll ask it specifically, are there any 8-bit microcontrollers with internal 32-bit timers? Yes, <laughs> there are 8-bit microcontrollers with internal 32-bit timers, although less common than with 32-bit timers. Few include our AT Mega series. Really? AT Mega 64? 128? They got a 32-bit counter timer, do they? I didn't know that. Pick 18 series. Oh, okay. They've got have 8-bit architecture and offer a 32-bit timer. Chat GPT-4 is slow. <laughs> Thank you. I will review the data sheet because I didn't think that the AT Mega 128 had a 32-bit timer in it. Two 8-bit timers with separate prescalers and compare modes, two expanded 16-bit time counters and separate prescaler compare modes and compare modes. Okay, you might be able to join those two expanded 16-bit time counters. I, I don't think I've ever, I've only used like an Atmel uh, once or twice at the microcontroller level and I don't recall having to use the 16-bit timer in it. So yeah, I'm not really seeing the 32-bit. Can we do 32-bit? Uh, AB instructions are 32 bits wide. No, nope, there's nothing else in there. 32-bit. No, 32-bit. 32-bit instruction. 32-bit ID register. Nah. Nah. There's nothing about using the timer as a 32-bit timer. So... The AI is wrong. And let's try this uh, PIC 18, uh, 18F25K40. Jeez, could they made it more, <laughs> more convoluted? It's got a watchdog timer, three 8-bit timers, four 16-bit timers. Okay, but can we do, can they be cascaded as 32-bit timers? Hardware, ti hardware limit timer. Hardware monitoring fault detection. Cool, bananas. 8-bit uh, pre-charge timer. No, that's for the uh, capacitive touch. Oscillator startup timer, four 16-bit timers, search for 32-bit, no, 32-bit, 32-result, 32-bit, okay, it's got a hardware multiplier, uh, wow, really? In the 18F series, didn't know that? Uh, nah, nah, I didn't really, just just the multiply result, that's it, I, it's not related to the timer, I don't think, so yeah, nah, so we're probably going to have to go to like a up it to a 16 bit, but as I said, once you're after specific requirements for something like a timer like that, um, you really need to go to the manufacturer's uh, parametric search, so uh, let's go to TI here, so let's view all products, does this give us the parametric search? 
It does, it does, and we can filter all filters over here. Timers, 16-bit, there you go. I was going to look under peripherals, but uh, no, it's they've got a separate thing down here because I know, uh, oh, they have up to six. Okay, so there you go. You want at least two, let, let's say four timers, four 16-bit. It looks like we're only going to get 16-bit timers, as I suspected, uh, as my memory uh, served me correctly. We can go across here, 16-bit timers. There you go. Sorry, my head's in the way, but you can see that that column there, we can get five or six timers that's pretty groovy uh 16-bit timers and i'm pretty sure that they can be uh cascaded to a 32-bit timer six 16-bit timers with up the seven capture compare registers a uh, 32-bit crc that's pretty groovy no it looks like we'd have to go to the timer section to actually uh figure to actually see it sometimes you're not oh well, i'm not gonna i'm not getting it on a keyword uh, search. They certainly don't tell you at the top level of the data sheet, which is not very handy, is it? But I'm pretty sure from memory the MSP430 timer can uh, be cascaded. Let's have a look. Timer B. So there's your timers down there. Seven capture compare registers. Uh, it looks like it's got internal, external as well. Timer A, timer B, input, and then you start getting into the complexities as we might look at of the internal architecture of the timers and where it can get its clocks from and prescalers and all sorts of things like that so it gets messy but i'm i'm pretty sure anyway without getting bogged down in the, the, the details i'm pretty sure you can cascade these 16-bit timers in here to do 32-bit but maybe not this one this is an ultrasonic sensing for water metering applications i can't like, it looks like they got you'd, you'd probably have to choose the like the specific one Okay, so yeah, nah. Okay, let's. Uh, I certainly wouldn't rule that out, but let's go over to Microchip and uh, see what they've got. Now, let's explore their 16 bit micros here, and which I've used before. Uh, product selection guide that's what we want. Is that our parametric search? No, it's PDF. Ah, clocks and timers. There you go, 16 32 bit there, and they've all got them. They've all got them. <laughs> the entire pick 24 range. I thought they had more than that. Uh, timers. Yeah, general purpose 1632 bit timer with compare capability. Yep, that looks pretty groovy. But I also want one with uh, segment um, LCD as well. So what I actually want is the segment LCD over here. Is that, how does that work? Does that, 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 that doesn't click. It's broken. What graphics LCD? What? broken <laughs> anyway uh we've got the lcd segments so we can have up to 200 like we that's plenty <laughs> 256 is absolutely plenty so let's go look at a pic 24f um, the gl 30x that's the gl family low pin count value line segment lcd usb i d don't need usb don't need any of that uh comparators um you no know, don't really need comparators uh and these are all extra low power. Oh, hello. Feature core independent peripheral LCD with autonomous animation. I need that. It allows you to like toggle between different states. Like if you've got a clock or something, it, it flashes and it looks like you can do that in the LCD module. You don't have to do that in code. I'm sold. I'm sold. Um, <laughs> hats off to microchip marketing. I don't know how you would find that. Let us know. Leave it in the comments down below if any other micros with LCD capability have this um, autonomous animation thing. Most display applications involve a few common uh, animations like blinking, periodically alternating between displays and blanking of pixels by using the integrated LCD drive with autonomous animation. You can offload most of these animation routines from the CPU. This allows you to, to enable uh, animation in power saving modes while the CPU is in doze, idle or sleep modes. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. Like you can flash things off and on and you can actually switch between, I wonder if they've got like a mapping for two entire displays and you can actually, it looks like you can presumably however many segments you got, you know, your 256 segments, it, it has dual mapping and it'll just automatically switch between those. So you load up both memory maps with the info you want and it can just toggle between them. Wow, I'm sold. Hang on, I might be sold further. Quickly design a display interface with MPLAB Co Configurer. MCC, reduce your display design time to minimize the help of MCC. It eliminates the uh, meticulous and time consuming tasks in mapping the pins and segments. Allows you to import display icons. Oh, 
I am sold. <laughs> Ding-a-ling, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, I, I, I'm going to stop looking now. I'm going to stop looking. I'm, I am sold. Ultra loud power, ultra sleep, yeah, because they're battery friendly. Oh, so we got, it, it meets the requirements. It's ultra loud power. Oh, by the way, I forgot it'd be nice if it also had an internal real-time clock um, as well with an external watch uh, crystal as well so that it can keep the uh, time. That would be uh, nice. I can always use an external chip for that. That's not a deal breaker, but uh, I'm, I'm sold. I haven't used this configurer thing. Learn more about the MCC. It looks like it's not, okay, code configure. Yeah, no, I, I think I might have um, touched on this before. But yeah, I haven't used the LCD one. It does other things, not just uh, LCD. And then it'll have different peripheral stuff that allows you, just a nice GUI interface that allows you to actually configure everything. And one of the annoying things about LCD designs is actually, as they said, mapping those segments in, especially if you're multiplexing the displays. If that takes care of all that, ha! Huh, you save, save a day's work just digging around with that. So GL302 segment LCDs. Ah, 42. 42 segments. That's not enough. 80 will cover it. I don't need 64K of memory, but, you know, that's that's what you end up with, right? Uh, 36 pin count, right? So it can map 80 segments. So that's low That's low pin count. No USB. Don't need it. Um, it looks like, no, it looks like they've got more devices. Why, do, why can't you show me the whole lot? View all parametrics. They keep changing the, oh, this is, oh, this has got one of these jazzy thingamabobs. Okay, there's nine parts in this series, so, you know, it's not like the configure is a huge amount of help. Actually, let's go up here. We want a minimum 71.5. 75. I think I might be able to get away with 75. <laughs> I really don't want, like, hundreds of segments. So let's, like, narrow the range like that. Have we got... No, we've still got nine parts. What? And uh, pricing, not too concerned about pricing, but might as well go for, like, the cheapest $1.90. Uh, 24 FJ1, 28 GL303. It's got 80 segments, which is enough. And no, no USB interface. That's fine. Don't care about ADCs. Uh, pin count. Uh, 36. 36 pin jobby. 8, 8K of RAM. <laughs> Tons. It looks like it's that one. That's a winner winner chicken dinner. Let's look at the 24 FJ64 GL303. Can we actually buy that? Can we buy it? <laughs> First thing you do, before you design the PCB, pro tip, before you design the PCB, order your parts. Make sure you can get them. Search. I've had this problem. DigiKey, like, just takes forever. Give me bloody mouser. 630 in stock, 2 bucks 90, one off, 340. No stock of that one. Whoa. Yeah, not going to design in one that's only got those. So, you know, I want like 10,000 in stock, please. <laughs> not that I plan on making 10,000, but, you know, it's, it's the vibe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expand it a bit so that uh, I can get more of a selection of parts because maybe the higher pin count jobbies are going to be better look if i just search for uh the 64 gl let's just search for that and don't worry about the ones afterwards there we go 4800 in stock <laughs> now we're talking another 10,000 expected the first of the first 24 Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hope you don't want to make any more than that. Um, but yeah, so you can might buy the 4800 now. Yeah, 64 pin quad flat pack. No worries. Did your key finally worked? We've got 2000 stock here for the 302. Oh no, that's probably not going to have that's not going to have enough pins. The 306 here, 1200 in stock. Let's go for the 128. GL series. Maybe we'll actually get with more memory. You know, like <laughs> you might go for the slightly pricier, higher priced part um, if it's more available, if it's more readily available. There we go. 11,000 stock. Now we're talking the 24FJ128GL306. I'll take that one. Thank you very much. <laughs> How much is that? Uh, three bucks, two bucks, 62 in uh, 1200. No workers, right? So we can get them. Okay, I'm going to run with that for now. So 128GL306 family data sheet. Dead man timer for monitoring health of software. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's it's really overkill, but it's got 32 segments by eight commons with up to 256 pixels. Absolutely plenty. It's got the LCD charge pump. Don't need anything uh, separate. Uh, core independent LCD animation. 
So it's got that animation thing, that cool, funky animation feature, which is really nice. Don't care about it, but and it's, you know, it got all the extremely low power, like you know, half a dozen different uh, low power modes and stuff like that. Uh, does it have a real time clock? Yes, hardware real time clock calendar. I'm liking this. This has looked like a winner winner chicken dinner. But yeah, as I said, like the smaller 80 one would probably do the business, but if you can't get it, um, it might be better to actually design in the larger footprint. In fact, this is probably an example of where we might be able to uh, design in dual footprints so that, because uh, the picks are going to be fairly pin compatible. So you actually put in the dual footprint and you populate whichever one you can actually get. Um, and then you can just generate two uh, binaries and program whichever part you happen to be able to get because one's going to be physically larger. One's going to be like the 64 pin uh, jobby, isn't it? And one's going to be like the 44 pin or, or something. And maybe the 44 pin footprint will fit inside the 64. That'd be interesting to have the dual footprints in there and you could have one inside the other and just join them, you know, um, short them out and um, populate whichever one you can actually get because uh, we're still in the component crisis and probably for forever will be now. Okay, time in modules uh, provides five independent general purpose 16-bit timers, four of which can be combined into two 32-bit timers. Winner, the device also includes five, five multiple output advanced uh, capture compare modules. Well, let's go to the timer videotape, shall we? Timers two, three, four, and five. Okay. Oh, look, they uh, refer to timers. They've got a dedicate. They give you a link. This is really good. Yeah, so here you go. They give you the uh, document, a dedicated document just for the timers. So this might provide, you know, more detailed information. So yeah, you know, we've, we've got the Prescaler. Um, do we have a, ded a second dedicated uh, clock input so we can actually have an external clock, but they had do they have an external oscillator? We might actually have to go back to the individual data sheet here. here they are they are configuring timers uh, two and three or four and five to give you a 32-bit um, Output and it can tie into the ADC as well, but I don't need uh, any of that then uh, then there's the capture compare modules as well uh, timer clock uh, generator so all the different clock sources readily available diagram that shows me time based generator clock sources for the capture compare timer modules it looks like it has tons of flexibility trigger and sync logic as well might be needing that aha here's the family clock diagram this might uh, Tells, yeah, it's got a secondary oscillator here, secondary oscillator enabled, uh, the post scalar, uh, frequency to CPU, yeah, and that can go through to the M uh, capture compare modules, which is part of the uh, timer modules, uh, it goes to the peripherals as well via a divide by two, so yeah, it looks like we can switch through a secondary oscillator, or will the secondary oscillator, uh, that's a low power RC oscillator. Okay, oh no, that, that's the internal low power. So maybe if you use a main oscillator, a secondary oscillator, a secondary oscillator for the timer, you probably can't then have the real time clock one as well. So you might have to use the secondary one for the uh, real time clock. Oh yeah, there it is. Secondary oscillator goes off to the RTCC there. So if you're using the real time clock counter, if you've got a 32 kilohertz watch, uh, crystal just for that um, that goes off to the RTCC then you can't unless it you happen to use that frequency maybe let me think about that one I might be able to actually yeah yeah I might be able to I might be able to use the RTCC I might be able to use the 32.768 kilohertz watch crystal to not only power the RTCC that I want but also um, as an input via this mux here to go into my timer. Anyway, I'm liking the look of this. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I think I found my part, Not maybe not this exact part, you know. But I'm loving the sound of that configurable um, LCD. I know a lot of other manufacturers, people are probably screaming in the comments down below, oh, I can do this on ARM, and I can do this on ST. Yeah, go ahead, leave it in the comments down below. I know. Um, <laughs> Please, <laughs> seriously, like, yeah, put, you know, if you've got a nice uh, micro down there that's low power, supports, you know, 32-bit, uh, flexible 32-bit timer, 
capabilities, uh, real-time clock, and can drive, um, you know, 70-plus segment LCD as well. Um, leave it in the comments. I can probably do it on the MSP430, as I uh, said, because I, I, I'm pretty sure the two 16-bit timers can be configured into one, cascaded into one 32-bit. So anyway, there you go. And please let me know if there is a parametric search function that can go across manufacturers that will find an individual peripheral like a timer. There might be. I don't know. Anyway, that was fun. And that's what I'm doing with this new project. Anytime I'm kind of like uh, doing something on it, I might just press record here and just, um, you know, there's no formal design process. It's just whatever I happen to be aspect of it, I happen to be working on, I'll probably just uh, shoot and record a video if I can. And if you enjoy me doing this sort of stuff, I know these types of videos don't get, you know, a huge number of views. Um, the enclosure one I released yesterday, it's doing eh, not, you know, it's because people have like specific needs. But if you like these sorts of uh, design projecty type videos of stuff I'm just working, I happen to be like doing some real work here, um, the finding stuff. If you like me doing these kind of videos, please give the engagement with the thumbs up, subscribe, bell notification. Although I've done a video on how the bell notifications BS. Anyway, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time. <laughs>